Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. Just got through doing some video shooting a major service on the Honda Element here and uh, well, some other things about uh, synthetic and regular oil. Uh, those should be fun discussions. I've been doing a lot of thinking since my last post about telematics and I've been reading through a lot of your comments and I kind of ha always had an intention of sort of responding to your responses to that video. And uh, one of the main things that, that I wanted to speak to was a lot of you don't like those things in, in new cars. You, you want to keep your old cars so that you can maintain them. And I kind of get that because let's face it, we're of that type. If, if you're watching my show, there's, there's a good chance that you spend a lot of time maintaining your own vehicle or you work as a technician or what have you. Um, either way, you would rather not see those systems. And some of us remember the days of uh, power windows being a luxury item and not standard equipment. Those little things that you actually crank the window up and down with. <laughs> Pretty cool. It, it's, it's hardly even seen anymore because just vehicles have gone that way and the market has really dictated uh, what, what manufacturers will make. So us guys of, that are of the opinion that, uh, and girls, that are of the opinion that we really like our old school stuff and we're not really into having fancy navigation systems or being able to Facebook while we drive down the road, that kind of thing. Uh, that was something else a lot of you brought up also, that, that just driving down the road and trying to do all that other stuff aside from focusing on the road like you should be uh, is not necessarily the best option. But we spoke about in other videos how vehicles are becoming more and more autonomous because apparently we uh, have a very short attention span and, and can't be bothered to uh, keep our eyes on the road these days. And it's dangerous. I mean, texting and driving, that kind of thing. And I don't know if these things are coming about to try to address that or they're actually making it worse. It's, it's really difficult to say. Um, but, but there were a lot of interesting comments along those lines. Now, as far as these systems go, and as far as the point that I was trying to make in the original video, uh, some of you were talking about open source so software and, and the dangers of that or not dangers of that. Um, I thought that was an interesting argument. It's a, it's a take that I didn't really, I didn't really come up with, but I, I appreciated that input. I think overall what we would see as far as these systems are concerned, is the, at least as far as what I've seen as far as just vehicles in general, is they're becoming more and more modular. And what I mean when I say that is, like say for instance you've got these electronics like your satellite navigation system, your stereo system, and your, you know, touch screen, whatever, that all goes with this. It all is like one complete unit. And this is a good thing and a bad thing. So, in a way, as far as your diagnosis is concerned, if it ain't working, you gotta replace it. The downside is, the replacement cost of those things, $1,500, $2,000, Lots of money. Vehicle manufacturers, just for the manufa manufacturing sake, are making these things module because they have one model vehicle that they have several different trim levels. One has Navi, one doesn't have Navi, one has OnStar, one doesn't have OnStar, but it's the same vehicle. So they, they design it with these modules to say, okay, we're, you know, as it's coming down the assembly line, this one, you know, according to the build sheet, gets this. It, it gets the satellite navigation system. It gets all the fancy bells and whistles. This next one doesn't. Same vehicle, just different trim levels. So they make these things modular, just to pop in and out, that kind of thing. As far as how it affects the aftermarket industry, well, say for instance you get some strange problem, like maybe there's a pinched wire or something like that that might have happened during assembly or something like that, and it doesn't show up till way down the road till it chafes through and shorts out on the inside of there. You go through and you replace that $2,000 unit and you plug everything in and you still have the same problem. That's the kind of thing that I'm trying to get at. Um, because a, a lot of you pointed out that, that those systems are you know, not so difficult. But the communication with those systems, the interface, the tools that you use to interface with them to try to speak to them and say, ah, you know, what, what are you having a problem with today? You know, that, that computer language that some manufacturers have become proprietary with, like they, they have their own language that they speak to their own components with. And they, they try to, and I guess, I guess a large part of that video was how they were marginalizing and moving out the independent shops. And some of you commented that, you didn't mind that because you'd rather keep the gravy work and just do the tires and the services and things like that and kick those complicated things down the road to the dealership. But my point was, is as far as the customer was concerned, you're no longer the one-stop shop after it's out of warranty. Or maybe they like you better than the dealer and they come to you since day one. Either way, it, it, creates, it creates a whole different market. It creates a whole different aspect to repair that is above and beyond just the mechanical 
what I've noticed over my tenure as a technician is the move from mechanical repair professionals to almost electronics repair professionals. I mean, take Scanner Danner for instance. He spends a lot of time with LabScope using very high-end equipment to, to do his diagnosis. And that stuff is necessary. It's, it's also very helpful to him because he knows how to use those things. But that becomes a very specialized thing. Those, some of you brought that same thing up, is that what you foresee is you foresee shops that specialize in these types of things, like some shops specialize in stereo installation or spinometer work or things like that. Maybe people will come up and specialize in all the tech stuff. Um, what I was trying to bring to it was, as far as this proprietary software and all the stuff that goes along with it, uh, there will be a big expense, a big business expense as, as a business owner to try and have the equipment to communicate with these new systems. And, and that, you know, that can hurt because, uh, you know, we've talked about before about disposable technicians and how the training to understand these languages and understand these systems, how to repair them, how they work, that kind of thing. Uh, comes into play. So there's, there's an investment in education as well as equipment that uh, you're going to have to make in order to service these things. And then you, you have to make that decision as a shop owner. Do I pursue this or do I not pursue this? Do I stick with a customer base that, that may get smaller and smaller over time? I mean, it, ultimately that's what it's about. It's about your business model as a shop owner, an independent shop owner, because as far as the manufacturers, they're going to do what they're going to do. It's us independents that are going to have to pick up the pieces in the end. And that was really more to my argument and where I was coming from. So I'd like to continue this discussion. Um, feel free to respond to, to what I've brought to you here and uh, you know, bring, bring new things to the table because I, I enjoy this interaction. Along with all this, there'll be a link in the description to a forum discussion about this video along with uh, you know, on my website that uh, we can also talk about it further if you want to there. So you have lots of options. But I really enjoy the interaction with all of you. Uh, it's, it's become this huge brain trust. I mean, you think of things that I don't think of, and I just, I just try to be a catalyst to you and uh, see, what, see what happens. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at EricTheCarGuy.com, where type in a couple of keywords to the search function if you have automotive questions, and hopefully you'll get an answer. If not, feel free to sign up for the site. It's free, and uh, you can ask your question over at our forum in the service and repair section. Or you can participate in the discussion about this video or comments below or what have you. I can also be found at Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I close with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.